Hi and welcome to another episode of Reaper TV. In this video we're going to be checking out the new Isotope Neutron plugin. We're going to be taking a look at what it does, I'm going to give my first impressions on it and in a future video I'm going to show you in a lot more detail what this plugin actually offers you. But to start off with, let's just have an overview and see what we have available. So to start off with, what exactly is Neutron? Well, it's a kind of a channel strip. It gives us two compressors, an equalizer, an exciter, and a transient shaper. But inside that, we've also got a huge amount of control. As with most of these kinds of plugins, you've got a load of presets available to you, which is a great starting point. But this plugin has something just that extra little bit special that takes it above and beyond something that just allows you to use cookie cutter presets that are not geared towards the track that you're working on or the instrument or the piece of audio that you're working with. So anything that can actually analyze that audio and come up with a better solution as a starting point is a really, really positive step forward in your mixing process and that's exactly what Neutron from Isotope offers us. So let's have a little look at the interface first of all and then we'll take a look at the presets and we'll take a look at how you can use this automation to analyze your track and come up with a good starting point. So if we take a look at the interface it's typical Isotope interface you've got a dark layer layout we've got something that's very similar to ozone which is something that i used to do mastering on so it's a great interface to work with if you like darker looks if you don't then you're kind of out of luck you're going to have to work with what we have available so as you can see we've got an equalizer a compressor a second compressor an exciter and a transient shaper at the moment nothing is being done but we can switch between any of these by clicking on their relevant entry and all we need to do is we can turn it on and off by using the enable and disable module in the top left hand corner of each of those we can reposition those in the signal chain any way we want so we can align this and use the signal chain setup using any or all of those particular plugins in that channel strip. So that gives us a great starting point where we can just choose the different elements we want and if we wanted to do it manually we can do that quite easily. So let's just say for example we want to use the compressor as our first line then we want to equalize the actual audio itself well we can do that and as you can see we have 12 bands of audio we can use. We've got high pass filter, low pass filter, we've got a range of different things available. We've also got dynamic and we've got sort of passive modes where you can just set the EQ yourself or you can have a dynamic which will then interact with other elements to trigger the EQ itself. So you can link this and side chain this all inside the plugin itself and these are all kinds of things we'll take a look at in a future video where I can break it down and give you more detail on the different modules and how they work. So we can EQ in the way you'd normally expect, you can just Go to any point, you could just increase or decrease the EQ on any particular frequency, you can adjust the shape form, you've got a whole range of different things, like you say if you want to switch it to dynamic mode you can enable that, you can use compress or expand, you can use the threshold to specify exactly what triggers the, the, uh, the dynamic EQing. So you've got all that available to you, you've got your low pass filter if we want to engage that we can do that and you can see we've got various different roll offs that we can pull up. We can adjust the frequency manually if you want to get to a specific frequency as opposed to using these sort of starting points and the different types of shapes that we've got to work with. So you can see we can quickly and easily set this up to EQ exactly as we would want. So nothing that's kind of out of the ordinary there, it's very similar to lots and lots of other dynamic EQs where we can use that in a normal fashion. The compressor, much the same kind of thing again, you can see we've got three separate sections we can use on there and we can just enable or disable any of those, we can adjust the attack and release, we can adjust the mix, so the amount of the original audio signal mixed with a compressed signal, so we can use a wet and dry mix on there to get exactly what you want. Again, you've got a whole range of different options. We can switch between vintage mode and we have digital mode so we can adjust the way that the characteristics of that particular compression are being applied to the track or the piece of audio. And the same with the second compressor. You can see we can enable and disable that. We've got all the different options available to us. We can enable this. We can go through again. We have three different sections. Nothing untoward there. Nothing that once you're used to working with a compressor, you're going to be used to these kinds of things. The exciter, again, we can see we can come in here, we can adjust that, and what we have available to us is we have three separate bands, which we can then adjust in to drive the blend, again, the wet and dry blend. We can go through different, uh, what should we say, styles of 
exciting that's going on there so we can go through retro tape warm or tube so we can adjust the characteristics of the way that the audio is being excited with this plugin and again we have this over three different bands and again we can each one of those bands can be the amount of drive we want to apply to it and also the amount of blend the wet and dry men uh, wet and dry mix we want to apply we also have a transient shaper and we'll take a look at that again in future videos in a bit more detail but you can see we again have these three separate sections we can also adjust the type of shaping that's being done whether we want to use a sharp medium or smooth shaping the amount of sustain being applied and the amount of attack being used finally if we take a look on the right hand side we also have a limiter so we have six different effects that we can use now apparently the limiter in this is very similar to the limiter that you use in ozone which is supposed to be very transparent and I haven't really played about with it too much, so I can't really comment on how good or bad that is, but I'm sure this is something I will get into as I start to break down through the plugin and use it a lot more in different tracks and different circumstances. We can bypass the entire plugin suite, so we can use this to very quickly A and B to see exactly what is being affected and how the audio is being improved or not, if the case may be. So that's kind of an overview. We've also got the track assist at the top. We've got the ability to name this particular channel strip. And also we've got a range of presets. If we expand that down, you can see we have a pile of options available based upon the instrument. So as we've seen, the presets are a great starting point. You can use those any way you want to. But what I think is the probably the best selling point of this particular plugin and that's the track assistant and what that does is that will analyze either the entire track or the audio whatever you're feeding through the channel strip it will then analyze it and consider what it thinks is the best settings for that channel strip to get the best audio from it and again these are just starting points so let's take a look at that in action and we'll use it on a drum track and we'll see the before and after see exactly how it works so what you need to do is Put this, for example, on the drum master. Now, again, you can use this on individual drum pieces, on individual tracks, it doesn't really matter. I'm doing it on the master, so we can affect the entire drum track. So, we've got an instance of this now on our drum track. And what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna run the track, and we're gonna apply the track assistant, and that's gonna spend a few seconds going through and analyze the track, and then it will engage what it considers to be optimal settings as a good starting point. So let's take a look at that in action. Okay, so there we go. That's gone through now and analyzed the drum track. So let's just show the drum track, just we only got that available to us. And as you can see, it thinks the equalizer, the excite, and the compressor are the three components in the channel strip that need to be available to us. If we go to the EQ, you can see it's now gone through and EQ'd what it considers to be a good starting point. Like I say, you can come in, you can add additional points to this, you can adjust any of the EQ settings, anything you want on there. But this is a good starting point. Now, that's great. And like I say, we can easily come in and we can adjust this to get exactly what we want. But where this really starts to shine is where we take a second track, for example, the drum track and the bass track, which kind of have lots of overlapping frequencies, especially in the especially in the low end of the kick drum. And that can be a problem for a lot of people where you can't necessarily see or hear where those conflicting frequencies are. So you can end up cutting and boosting across the, the different sort of instruments to try to allow different elements to, to shine through. And it can be quite a difficult process, especially when you're new to mixing. So let's take a look at how we can use this now in conjunction with a second instance of Neutron. And we can link the two together and we can see any frequencies that are building up and we can then allow us to compensate for those via the EQ. So let's take a look at that. So first thing I need to do is just enable a second instance of Neutron and we're going to apply that to the bass master track. So we're just going to come down to our FX browser and we'll drag an instance of that up over the bass master track. Let that load up and we'll do the same as we did before. We'll just analyze the track, let Neutron come up with what it thinks is a good starting point. Let's do that.
Okay, so there we go. It's now analyzed the track, analyzed the, the, the bass part, and we've now got that logged in with, again, what it thinks is going to be a good starting point for our EQ compressor and second compressor and exciter and so on, which is great. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you we can easily just rename this and we'll call this Bass Master, just so we make a bit more sense in what we're doing. Now, you see we've got the masking option. If I click on masking, that'll bring up an option that'll allow us to choose what we want to compare this to. In other words, what two instances of Neutron do we want to compare to each other? So you can see I've got Percussive, which is the drum track, which I haven't renamed, but we can rename that. I'll pull that up and you can see we now have the bass EQ and we've got the drum EQ and the compressor and so on. You can see that's specific to this particular track. It only works with the equalizer. But what this allows us to do now is to play this track back and we can start to compare any frequencies that have a buildup. Now we see where we've got this, this sensitivity. At the moment it's set to low. So if I increase that, we'll start to see we'll get a better representation of what the audio is like. So let's take a look at that. Let's just run that, I'll put the sensitivity up and take a look at this strip above the second EQ. Keep an eye on that and that's going to show us the buildup of frequencies if they sort of overlap and build up and they'll get more and more red as they get more and more evident that they're building up a frequency sort of clash. And if you take a look at the main EQ area, you'll start to see gray through to white and that'll show us a sort of spectrograph of exactly where our build up is, is applying at any given point in the track that we're working on. So let's just run the bass and the drums together. So I'll just solo out the bass and the drums so you can hear the two together and then to keep an eye on this and we'll see exactly what's going on. So as you can see there, we've got a buildup of frequencies in various different areas and throughout the, the entire song you can see where they start to build up. So you can allow it to compensate and what makes it even easier is we can run this in inverse link mode. So if we make an adjustment, say for example we bring in band 2 and I make an adjustment, you can see that only applies to the drum EQ. If we take a look below, or actually the, the bass EQ I should say, not the drum EQ, so you can see that makes no effect on the drum track. So I can go in, I can make subtractive or additive edits to it, but nothing happens. I have to do the same thing. So I have to engage that and I'd have to find the exact same frequency and boost that where I cut the other one. And I've got to do a lot of work there. So let's just disable those two. If I set inverse link on, now if I create some new bands, you'll see as I make any adjustments, I get a mirror image or the complete opposite on the drum track. So I can very easily make edits to frequencies and they will adjust their position exactly the same in reverse. So it's a great way of allowing me to quickly go in and say, let's, let's try this. Do I want to increase or decrease the EQ on any particular frequency on the drum track or on the bass track in this example, just to see which I want to shine through. So I may want the bass to shine through a little bit so I can cut some of the drum track, that, that specific EQ, and then that'll allow the bass to come through in the mix. And I can do the same obviously with the vocals and the guitars where there's a lot of overlapping frequencies. So it's a very quick and easy way of being able to do things like that and it just makes it a very intuitive way of doing things where you can get a visual representation in real time of exactly what's going on with the audio frequencies on two particular EQ sections on two particular instrument instruments. Well, I hope you found this video useful. I hope it's given you insight into what Neutron could offer you. If you have any comments, questions or feedback on this video or anything else we cover on the channel, please pop those in the comments section below. And until next time, happy mixing.